Hi folks, this video is part two of my solar shed ventilation series. And in the last video, I was not able to show the installation and testing of the second setup that I built using the mining fan or the server fan. And I have a new 50 watt solar panel, which I'm going to use for this project. I don't know if this 50 watt solar panel was enough to run my fan, but I'm going to find out. Okay, I'll go ahead and connect my solar panel to these MC4s. These are from the old solar panels that I had out here earlier. These solar panels were moved over to the solar workshop. And now I'm going to reuse the connections. I haven't used these in about a year. So hope they're still working. And I would need to secure those cables, but I'll let him hang there for now. All right, let's go into the shed and check out the other end. Here's the business end of the MC4 connectors you saw earlier. Now these have been disconnected and have been that way for some time because I wasn't using them. But I'm gonna to try to use them again for my brushless DC ventilation fan. And I need to check these wires and hopefully they will have the voltage on them. If they don't, I've got a problem or I've made a mistake. So I'm getting about 20 volts coming in through those wires from the new solar panel, 50 watt solar panel. Now what I need to do is route these wires over to my new brushless DC fan and get some power going into it. Now earlier I got on Amazon and I bought a spool of low voltage lighting cable from Iron Forge Cable. And by the way, I got this wire with my own money. I'm just telling you where I got it. And the reason I got it is because it's relatively affordable and it is copper wire as far as I know. I believe it's made in the US. And you know, this wire is not suitable for high-end solar stuff, but for fooling around in the shed, it should be just fine. The wire is only 16 gauge, but all I'm doing is running a fan. I don't think it's a big deal. I think it'll be more than enough for what I'm doing. And I have this strange hang up with wire. If I don't have a lot of it, I don't want to use it. So I got myself 250 feet. I think that will be enough. And I'm just going to run this wire across the shed from the original connections that I showed you earlier and use this to make the connections. If I change my mind later, I may rewire it all. Who knows how it will actually turn out. All right, so let me get this wire connected across the shed from one side to the other and we can power up the fan. Okay, there it is, ready to go in my shed. The outside is completely covered in black vinyl tape. Now I just have to put it in my window. It doesn't fit the best. I would like it to fit a little more tightly, but if necessary, I can uh, put something here and make sure it doesn't ever come out. And it seals really well around the window where the window comes down. Now I just need to get some power run to it and I can test the fan in my shed. Okay, so I've got a temporary wire hooked up and I've got some alligator clips here and I've got my 50 watt solar panel hooked up outside. And I'm not really sure how much power I'll need to run this, but 50 watts seems reasonable. And I'm not going to run the fan at full speed. So I'm just going to go ahead and hook it up and see what happens. I've hooked up negative and positive, so now I'm going to turn the fan on and see what happens. Yeah, that's moving some very nice air. It's not the quietest fan, but I'm not going to be out here listening to it, so... It's actually uh, possible to go higher than five volts. Let's try six. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm right around 6 volts, and there's a satisfying amount of air coming out. Honestly, this fan moves a ton of air. It's amazing how much air it actually moves. I'm not disappointed with the fan and its airflow. I think I will buy a couple more fans like this just in case I need a spare because they could burn out. And here's a closer look at the temporary setup. And I did install the finger guards on both sides of this fan because it is a very dangerous fan. And as you can see, well, you can't see it, but you can imagine that there's quite a bit of air coming out and it's hitting this heat sink right here. As I planned, some of the air is going to come over and cool this DC power supply. Running around 6 volts. That voltmeter is not perfectly accurate. I did calibrate it some, but it's around 6 volts. And here's the solar panel. Let's take a look at the solar panel. That's what's running it currently. And I think, I think it will be enough. And yes, you can hear the fan on the outside. I can definitely hear it, but it's not an obnoxious sound. It's actually a very pleasant sound. And I don't think it'll be a problem as far as the sound. Okay, so I'm running the fan at about 8 volts now. I just want to test it. I don't think I will run it all the time that way. And I might try a different fan. I have plans to try two or three of them. I'm not really sure which one I like best. This fan may be actually a bit overkill. It's extremely powerful, moves a lot of air. And it's really just going to be assisting my other fan, which is over here. Let me show you that. So my other fan is over here. And some of you may have already seen this. This is the one that I've been relying on for years. However, I notice in the peak of summer, I really have to push it hard. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to run this around maybe 6 volts in the current weather that we have now. And I'm going to let the other fan do some of the hard work. And then at the peak of summer, I can turn this fan up some and then I can lean on the other fan, turn that up. And together they can keep the shed, I think, fairly cool. Now I used to work in this shed at that workbench quite a lot. Uh, don't, I don't do that anymore. Maybe someday I'll be back in here. But this fan kept me cool. I would turn this fan up and it would blow cold air on me while I was at the workbench. And that worked pretty well. So right now this fan's job is just to keep the shed relatively cool and protect all the electronics that I have in here. And I don't plan to really sit at the workbench in this shed anymore. Not at the moment. But I do want my electronics to be protected. And this, this is doing the job. Now when I turn this up to 10 to 12 volts, it moves a tremendous amount of air, but honestly these motors are better off running at a lower RPM, they last longer, and I don't want to burn this fan up. So instead of burning the fan up, I'm going to add reinforcements in the form of a brushless DC server fan, and I hope they'll do the job. I believe that one of these server fans is enough. If it's not, I may add a second fan here but I have a feeling that won't be necessary. The power supply is getting a little bit warm. However, it's getting quite a bit of air blown on it by this fan. I don't think this thing is going to overheat. Uh, it's barely warm. You can tell that it's active and operating, but honestly, with the air blowing on it, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Um, I need to meter the current that's going out of this thing, but I don't think it's anything like more than one or two amps. I really think this circuit board is perfectly able to handle the load that it's being placed under, in my opinion. And on the outside, let's hear what it sounds like if I shade the solar panel. I'm going to go ahead and put my shadow on the solar panel. And you can see it just gracefully slows down. Take my shadow away, and it goes right back up to speed. I also have other solar panels on the shed. I have 250 waters up there already. Those are being used for running various electronics. I don't know exactly how all that's going to be wired up or how I'm going to use it, but if I need it, I have a dedicated 50 watt solar panel right there. And there's the thermometer. It's at 87.4 degrees. 
and honestly that's a little bit hot but I may do some more testing later to see if I can get that down with two fans I think I can as I mentioned in my other video you want to pressurize the shed so that all the hot air that's up there is forced out but of course that isn't happening right now because I have the shed door open and so all that hot air is just sitting up there it still cools the shed and I'm sure that would be even higher than 87 if I didn't have any fans at all and there's a look at my charge controllers charging the batteries there's another charge controller the MPPT charge controller I used to have here I had to remove that and here's another charge controller there's actually a bank of batteries down there on the floor and obviously because of the batteries I don't want it to get too hot in here either I hope you guys enjoyed this short update to my solar shed ventilation project I think this fan is going to work really well for me if you have any questions or comments feel free to let me know this technology is fairly simple and fairly robust and reliable and also quite cheap and I think it's better than buying an off-the-shelf shed ventilator or shed cooler I think it's better just to go ahead and make your own it's a great way to learn about solar power and basic electronics while you're doing the work thanks for watching folks more videos are on the way soon see you next time Cooling your shed with solar is a great way to learn about solar energy in a hands-on and interesting way. Don't be afraid to give it a try, just be careful with those fan blades. 